What's going on, everybody? It's Tuesday night. Welcome to the party. Adam Azer and Sia Najad on Fantasy Football Today. Sia is on our Fantasy Football Today DFS podcast, and you've probably heard him here on Fantasy Football or seen him here on our regular, I don't know, uh, flagship FFT show, whatever you want to call it. How you doing? Good evening, Sia. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. Thanks for having me. I love being on with you guys always. Uh, yeah, I just we just wrapped up our Tuesday show, which it's a it's a recap show, kind of looking back at our DFS lineups, and it's an early look at at week six DFS pricing in this case. So I just did that show. It's a solo pod, and then on Thursday, me and Mike McClure, who a lot of you are probably familiar with, we do a game by game preview. And this week, Adam, we have a surprise because Mike is out he's traveling so jacob gibbs is going to join me on thursday to do a dfs game by game preview that's thursday at five o'clock awesome and and sia and mike are dfs studs they are experts um so you definitely want like like i love giving dfs advice but i don't really know what i'm doing compared to these guys so just listen to the experts and check out the fantasy football today dfs podcast all right we're gonna drop we're gonna uh read your question somebody's somebody's asking would you drop her cousin so I got to see what the rest of this is here. Would you drop Kirk Cousins to add Geno Smith? No, I wouldn't do that. But no, I wouldn't do that. But at least it's a at least it's you know reasonable. So no. How about you? I, it's cl- it's closer. It's closer to me than it is to you, to be honest with you. Uh, and I and I'm not looking at the schedule right now. But if memory serves, the next handful of games for Seattle. Uh, I mean, really, it should be good for for everybody. That includes Ken Walker, obviously DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. The thing about Gino is even when he doesn't have a lot of pass attempts, like last week, he only had 25 pass attempts, but 16 completions was 268, 268 yards and three touchdowns. He's just been so hyper efficient. I kind of agree with you. I, I think I like Cousins, but it is it is really close to me. Yeah, I'll take Cousins. But Gino Smith has Arizona and the Chargers as his next two games. Arizona certainly a good matchup. Chargers have been a pretty good matchup, but but not great. And then the four and one uh, wild card Giants after that. All right. So if you have any questions, bring it on. Ken Walker is a top blank running back rest of season. Ken Walker is a top blank running back rest of season. By the way, Schneier is coming on in a, a little bit. He's uh, you know I think he's coming on a little bit. So we'll get his terrible take shortly. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you are you you uh, you lobbing that one to me, the Walker? Rest oh, you season? get the first word on everything, man. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. I just, no, I just oh, like because yeah. I'm gonna. Of course, I'm gonna bomb Adam, and so I'm 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 waiting for you to answer so that then then so I can answer. It'll cover me. Schneier could be wrong. Schneier Walker is a top blank running back. In- yeah. Right now, I'm still having trouble with the camera. I'm trying to get rid of this background and go to my actual background. Issues are happening, but I will say Walker is a top. 12 running back. No, he is season. not a top 12. Get the hell in, out of here. In fairness, I was going to say top 12 as well. And I was kidding about the whole, I don't need to go first bit. I'm just saying, uh, I, I think he's top 12 as well. He can do it all. And he's going to be, he's the snap counts and the carries. I mean, there are so few backfields that, that are going to enjoy like a running back getting like 70 to 80% of the carries and a majority of the pass work. And I think well, at least not, maybe not a majority, but, but, but a decent amount of pass work. I, yeah. I think Ken Walker's I great. That's the thing. I don't know if it's going to be Dallas, if it's going to be Homer when he's back. Um, so yeah. But the other thing is uh, Rashad Penny. I talked about this this morning. Rashad Penny only had one top 30 finish this year. Uh, you know, he, maybe he was on his way to that in week five, but in the first four games, he, he crushed Detroit and he only had one top 30 finish. They, they run so few plays. Only the Bears have run fewer plays than the Seahawks. So it's weird. It's like, we're going to buy into Ken Walker as a top 12 running back and Geno Smith as a top 12 wide receiver. One thing I will say about the pace of play, though, Adam, is that's a little bit skewed from the first two weeks where they ran, like, right. no plays. And since then, there's been a big change. It hasn't been. Not last week. Not last week against they the Saints. They ran 48 they plays. They didn't have the ball that often. because they, they it, The problem, like you said, is the defense. The defense is on the field a while. But there was the two weeks before that a little bit of a uh, – Wow, what is this? Colada quad. Well, this is our wow. poll. Our poll question today is what's the best way to slice a sandwich? Vertical? What does that even cut? mean? How do you, you do go slice like slice it like that, or do you do diagonal, the triangle cuts? Or do oh, you to not- cut a bread before you do it. You're talking about, right? Of course you do that. No, 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 no. You make a sandwich. I give a okay. piece of bread, two pieces of bread, you put your whatever ham and cheese on it. And then what do you do? Do you slice it down the middle? Do you slice it diagonally? Uh, I see. Or do I you see. not slice? 
Well, here's my thing. I don't eat white bread sandwiches. So if I'm going to eat a sandwich, I'm going to buy a nice piece of French bread or a nice Italian bread or ciabatta. And so then I'm looking for a different know, kind right? of slice. He's ridiculous. He's out of control. Who eats white bread these days in 2022? I eat wheat bread. Can I cut my wheat bread? I, I, I mean, what's the deal? Uh, see, how about, I'm a I'm a vertical guy, but I'm getting crushed in the pole yeah, here. Vertical's terrible choice. Unless I, you want to do the diagonal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. So while while Dan is at Harris Teeter and Whole Foods getting his uh, <laughs> poofy bread, I am cutting my uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, yeah. lightly toasted, by the way, diagonally. Yeah, diagonal and and it's a good move but, with the lightly you know, toast. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you put on the do you put on the peanut butter? After so you toast it and then you put on the peanut butter hot, like hot bread. Yeah, peanut. I put the peanut butter on a pretty a pretty nice layer of peanut butter, okay. and then the ratio of peanut butter to jelly, it's That's usually grape question. jelly, is like, uh, it's it, it's like it's like thirty three percent jelly, sixty six percent. Good like a ratio. Two to one ratio. That's a great <laughs> ratio. Right but it, that is peanut butter after to it toast first, then put this stuff on, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's just weird if you had put the peanut butter in the toaster. All right, who are we starting? Who are we sitting? Michael Pittman, Gabe Davis, Curtis Samuel. Samuel on Thursday night against the Bears. Gabe Davis against the Chiefs. Michael Pittman against the Jaguars. If we're sitting one this week, who's it going to be? Well, for me, it's going to be you sit Curtis Samuel. As good as those insured targets are, there's there's very little upside to them, especially in this Bears game. Whereas Gabe Davis isn't getting the targets, but when he does, they're so high quality. Uh, and, and in that game with the 54-point total, I, I don't see how you shy away from him or, or Pittman. Yeah, uh, I agree. Samuel, it's just the A dot is is uh, about five, four and a half this year. It's been more like six in recent weeks after week one, but he's just not getting you a lot of yards at all. So PPR, I can certainly understand liking Curtis Samuel, but it's just really just getting catches from him. One thing I um, will say about Pittman, though, and that, and I still would start him over Curtis Samuel. There's been a little bit of an alarming trend in recent weeks with Alec Pierce back taking a lot of those targets away, and part of the reason we bought into Pittman as this high, you know, early round three as like a priority player for a lot of us in drafts was that we thought he was going to get 150, 160 targets. If that's not the case in that offense, then then you have to downgrade him rest of season, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. But um, still kind of a small sample size there. And right. I think we were going to Pierce last week because of Pat Sertan being on uh, Pittman. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yes, you should drop Brian Robinson for Ken Walker and PPR for sure. Unload yeah. the clip on Walker, the whole FAAB. I'm okay with it. Uh, we only do one A now. We only do oh, one. Oh, yeah. We got rid of the second A. I forgot about it. Yeah. That. Could Aaron Jones' ceiling be a top five running back <laughs> if Matt LaFleur was? <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to that. That's a little unfair. A little oh, unfair. Wow. It's not unfair. Why is that unfair? Well, yeah, he's taken well, them to the no, you know, he's been a pretty good coach for them. Oh, really? Based on what the wins? I mean, listen, the, yeah. he's got Aaron Rodgers, he's got, a, he's got one of the top three quarterbacks of all time. Like, listen, if you take Matt Rule and you switch teams and, and you put Matt LaFleur on the other team, what do we think Matt LaFleur's record is going to be with Carolina and Baker Mayfield or whatever quarterbacks they had prior to him, Sam Darnold and such? I, I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying Matt LaFleur is a bad coach, I'm saying that. I don't think there's ample evidence that he's a great coach. And I think Aaron Rodgers is carrying a lot of that load to make Matt LaFleur look like the guy he is. Let's not forget, he's making some interesting decisions late in the game, not just this year, but but last year as well. And oh, by the way, as a GM, to the extent he has influence there, Jordan Love and then A.J. Dillon on a team that was like basically one win away from going to the Super Bowl. I, I'm not 100% sure about his his decisions on or off the field. Uh, that's fair. It's always hard to know how good I'll say this is. about some of the play calling stuff, though. When you have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, most of the time Rodgers is getting them in and out of checks and making a lot of those decisions. Like this past week against the Giants, they were playing them a certain way by stacking the box that was daring Rodgers to throw the football. And I got to be honest, just from watching the film on that game, Rodgers missed some open throws. He missed two mm. literal touchdowns, one to Lazard and one on a double move where he had either Dobbs or Tanyan, and he just didn't see it. So I don't know what's going on there, but it wasn't great. <laughs> Wasn't the what I Giants, expected. The Giants, I was looking at uh, DVOA today. They're like 28. Yeah, it's not they, great. They, they have probably the luck. That's what you call luck. good coaching, Adam. Like, yeah, or just bad quarterback play. Or luck. Yeah, yeah, I'll take either one. Um. All right, let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Come on. We, uh, would you trade James Conner for Ken Walker? That's a good question. Yeah. I would. Absolutely. I would. Yep. Uh, and someone traded Najee Harris for Ken Walker and and said that his league thought he was crazy. And Dave and I said, no, I don't 
think you're crazy at all. By the so way, if this, you agree with all that, how is he not a top 12 rest of the season for you, Adam? I don't think Connor's top 12. I don't think not. No, I don't either. I don't. Well, not okay. Name who you would put. All right. Tw- it's all tough right. to put you on the spot. That's a good question because when you, sometimes when you say top 12, you have sort right. of an idea of what a top 12 running back is, but right. you don't actually put it on paper. All right. So let's try and do it. Eckler, Chubb, Barkley, Jacobs, McCaffrey, Henry, Fournette. That's your top seven. They're all ahead of him, obviously. Okay. I would certainly take DeAndre Swift, Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones. That's 10. I would take Aaron uh, Jones. I don't know. A hundred percent. I'm taking Aaron Jones. Um, the way they use him. I don't know. I take Jonathan Taylor ahead of him. Sure. It's 11. Uh, I take Alvin Kamara ahead of him. That's 12. And then I could probably name five or six more that are more questionable, but miles. <sighs> oh, Joe Mixon. I would take over him. Miles no Sanders. Way. Yeah. I would definitely take me. You're getting so much more work and so many more catches from Joe Mixon. It's not even close. He finally ran better last week. Um, you know, he could be in the mix after that. Like, I think Brees Hall, I'd take Brees Hall over him. How He can be a better, in my opinion, he could be a better version of Brees Hall. He's on an offense that could very well be better rest of season. They have an actually, they have a quarterback pushing the football down the field better than like all but five quarterbacks in the NFL right now. So he could be in scoring position a lot. He's just as talented, I think, as Brees Hall. Maybe a little bit. They were on that same tier coming into mm-hmm. this draft. So I don't know. I feel pretty, and he could have a bigger workload than Brees Hall rest of the way. It's well, possible. It, it, it's a good comp regardless. I mean, the, the reality is Brees Hall week to week, I think at this point has top five, top eight upside. Right. Not, not, it's not going to be consistently. I mean, I think Ken Walker is sort of the same thing. I mean, how's he going to finish the rest of the season? I'm not sure. But if you, I mean, on to, to the extent we're talking about the waiver wire and, and fob, like I don't think there's going to be a better opportunity rest of season than Ken Walker right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I completely I, agree. Only- I mean, I mostly agree. I think we were saying that on yesterday on on our Beyond the Box Score episode. I, I think there's a world where if David Montgomery got hurt, Khalil Herbert would be available in a lot of leagues and, and pick him up. He isn't right now, but he was before the Montgomery injury, so I could see people dropping him. But there are a few scenarios, but the best handcuffs out there, Tony Pollard, Kareem Hunt, they're almost certainly never going to be on waivers. So, yeah, this is an amazing opportunity to get a running back. And I'll say this is supposed to be a waiver wire show, so I would say that Jalen Warren is a guy you should be picking up. Mike Tomlin said they're going to be playing him more. I don't know what that means. I don't think that means he's a start, but he's an injury away from having a really good role. He's now the third down guy for Pittsburgh, and they just need a spark, and Najee's not giving it to them. So t- check out uh, Jalen Warren. Of course, Eno Benjamin. We, I mean, I kind of feel like James Conner is going to play, but Eno Benjamin you might want to take, uh, might want to pick up. I'm trying to think of the guys. I, I mean – yeah, I'm picking up Taysom Hill if he's available. Not necessarily dropping. I mean, I'd like to roster two tight ends if I have him. But this is a really good waiver wire week. So if you have any waiver questions, go for it. Uh, here's one Joku or Everett rest of the season. What do you guys think? I think I'd, I'd take the upside of Njoku yeah. personally. Especially because you know yeah. you have the chance for fantasy playoffs of having that offense be a little kick started with Deshaun Watson back. I'll let Dan answer this one. I don't really <laughs> see an issue with my hair today. Do you? It's basically just typical Adam hair. Like this is what it always looks like. <laughs> it's never combed. There's never any product in it. Occasionally I, you get in post haircut where there's like three strands that shouldn't be for some reason. They're like in front. They forgot to cut them or he didn't ask. He like when, you know, when they give you the mirror at the end of a haircut, it feels yeah. like Adam is just like, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. He doesn't want to yeah. like put any conflict. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's just like, okay, Wait. that's all right. First of all, doesn't everybody say, yeah, it's fine? Like, I can never really, like, catch the angle, right, with the lighting. Like, I always – I'm just like, yeah, it's great. Like, don't show me next time. I mean, (laughs) there are times times when I have to ask them to to do something. Like, hey, can you make this a little shorter or something? And I hate that. I really hate doing that. I have no courage. Does anyone ever have a good answer when they ask you rounded or square in the back? I have no no idea. I just, just, like, each time I change my answer. (laughs) I've come to learn that I think squared is the way you're, you Where? should go there because okay. it could look kind of weird, like like an egg if you go like <laughs> rounded. Um, but Adam, I do want to say I do want to say something about your hair though because I noticed it when before we even went live. You, to me, I think what Alberto is getting at is you're kind of looking like suave, like it almost looks like you've got. Ooh. And I haven't seen you the last like week or so. I don't. Maybe this has been your look, but it, it, even with your mic. It looks like that's the the end of a, like a chain, like a really cool chain that you're wearing, like a necklace. <laughs> and then your hair is like matted down. And it's got this like gel quality to it. Believe me, I know gel quality. And I'm, I think that's where the question is coming. I think they're saying you look good. Like, what did you do with your hair today? I think you're going to be on more shows. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like this combination. 
Uh, no, I haven't done anything with it, uh, but I am naturally suave, I guess. Would you trade away James Conner for Damian Pierce? I don't have a problem trading away James Conner, personally. Um, but there's I some would. upside. There's, there's, there's some upside there, I guess. I just haven't seen it from him. I, I guess I wouldn't do it, but it's close. You said you haven't seen it from who? Uh, C. James C. Conner. Okay, I thought you were talking about Pierce, because I've seen a lot of upside from Pierce. Uh, yeah. Even the ability to break big plays, which I wasn't sure of. It wasn't really in his profile coming out of Florida. Right, right. But as far as what he's able to do between the tackles, force missed tackles, and create after contact, I think he's a better talent right now than whatever version of Connor this is, because this isn't this clearly isn't like the Connor we saw last year. He's playing through an injury, and now he's re that it's a reoccurring like this is is this a different injury or the same injury i i, I haven't caught up on this one right now uh no i, I think it's, it's a different injury it's a different yeah, injury is what i, I thought yeah. Injury, yeah so that's that could be a compensation injury that's what happens a lot when people come back from one injury and too soon so when you get these players who have one injury then a compensation injury potentially if that's what it is i just am looking to trade them away i, I just don't i don't want injured players on my roster yeah this one is thing- a injury so I don't the think it's, thing, it's different. Yeah. yeah it was, yep. The one thing I'll say about Connor is that Arizona's pretty bad and Kyler Murray's pretty bad, but I started, I've started to see some signs that that offense is starting to come back. And with DeAndre Hopkins coming back right. and Ron Dale Moore being a piece that they're clearly going to use, it's going to open up this offense, which should open up things for James Connor. So it, keeping in mind that, especially if you're in PPR, he's catching passes too, most likely once this offense really gets going. He could, like, Damian Pierce is going to catch some passes, but not nearly as many from a target standpoint as Connor. Loser. So I, I'd probably go Connor there. Sorry, right, I'm. What was that? Close. What was that? What was you just do? Uh, Kiner Falefa. He just, he's already uh, got an error that into a double play with two on one out. Kiner Falefa seems like the type of player that Adam London hates. Am I right oh, about that? Is that a good take? Well, I knew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Such a good take. I, yeah, I, I had a group mute the group text because I'm <laughs> obviously way behind or whatever. I'm sure they're trashing him right now <laughs> on the group text. Is Juju Smith-Schuster a bust? Is it too early to decide? And, and would you trade him? Would you trade him away? Uh, I, I think he is what he is. I think he's going to be a number three no, receiver. No. But I, I don't know that he's catching more than three touchdowns this year. He just That's just not his role. Uh, that is the, the bigger Kelsey. issue is they're not getting him involved vertically at all. And that was something they, yeah. they thought we were going to get because it was working for them in, in training camp. And it's just like, he should be getting more looks. He should be utilized in a vertical way, but maybe he just can't create separate, uh, z- sorry, vertical separation. I haven't really watched any chiefs tapes. So I don't really know, but, um, this was a player I had a lot of shares of. So I, it's not somebody I would trade now cause you're trading low, but I think you can start to think that he might not be living up to the fantasy potential you hope for. Dave likes him against zone coverage, and I think that's kind of an interesting take. We should, yeah, it's a good take. Yeah, because he's not really beating man coverage. Uh, boy, you remember? You remember how many points I needed from him last night to win? Oh yeah, I told me at the five. five. You didn't get it right. Well, he did. He, in oh, PPR, he got like PPR, six he points. It. It, is, it, you would have been so pissed. Did. I was really mad, though. I was such a bad mood. Did we check in on Tuesday? Who won our matchup, Adam? In the in the league? I mean, I know you won the matchup. Oh yeah, I did win that. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Kelly, DJ Dallas, or Samaj P. Ryan for a bench stash? It's Josh Kelly for me. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to take P. Ryan. You're basically just asking who's more likely to get hurt, Mixon or P. Ryan. But I think, I think if Mixon gets hurt, let's say they both get hurt, or Mi- yeah, Mixon or uh, Eckler, sorry. If, if both guys get hurt, I think P. Ryan has a bigger role than Kelly. I almost not. think it's the opposite for me. I think Kelly has some standalone value potentially being maybe a, a red zone guy. You know, if the Chargers score as many points as we think they are, he could be the guy inside the red zone to get a touchdown here, a touchdown there, almost like yeah. that Brian Robinson Great. type role. Agree with that. If it's strictly, I'm never starting him unless there's an injury to the starting running back, then I'd go P. Ryan, but I do agree with, your, with you there. Uh, this is a guillotine league. Burrow, Mixon, Higgins. Oh, somebody st- <laughs> didn't have, Bengals didn't have a good week, huh? Burrow, Mixon, Higgins, Goddard are all available. How much would you use? Dan, you're the guillotine guy, I think. Yeah, I'm, I, I've been pretty clear with the guillotine. I don't really spend too much of my budget. My strategy with guillotine is that is I either spend a big chunk of my budget on the difference makers. Like last week, Justin Jefferson hit the wire. That's the type of player I'd go for. If I don't see any true difference makers, and I'm personally not a believer that Mixon is, Higgins is probably borderline for me, but not quite there. I'd rather just pick off the guys because there's always going to be like free agent six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like for example, I picked up um Brandon Cooks a few weeks ago for like nine nine percent or something like that, or even fewer. I think it was. I think it was like nine bu- or nineteen bucks out of a thousand. So you want to look for either those lower tier guys that are kind of getting overlooked, or if there's one guy like a Justin Jefferson type, then you can kind of go for it my strategy it's not the right strategy just mine 
Uh, here's a weird topic. I think I'm going to bring this up on the show tomorrow. You were talking about Juju. Yeah. I want to tell you the 10, or well, it's 11. I have to extend it to 11 teams that the last 11 in intended air yards for pass attempts. So they, these 11 are throwing the ball downfield the least. Giants are one of them for sure. Giants are. You want me to go from 22 to 32 <laughs> or 32 to 22? I think it's pretty interesting. All right. The, the 22 is the Chiefs. Okay. Then the Panthers, Eagles, Packers, Bengals, Rams, yeah. Giants, Chargers, Chargers, Colts, Cardinals, Vikings. Cardinals and Vikings are tied for the lowest, basically, ADOT in the NFL. But you've got yeah, in the t- in the bottom 11, you've got the Chiefs, Eagles, Packers, Bengals, Rams, Chargers, Cardinals, and Vikings. Uh, the top, let's the top five. Saints, Falcons, Patriots, Steelers, Ravens, then Bears, Lions, Broncos, Raiders, Seahawks. It's this is a year to, to be throwing short. You know, it's pretty interesting. Well, you know, defense is uh, uh, that's such an interesting stat that I would not have anticipated. But I'm assuming it's because, like, in the Chiefs and in the Chargers case, maybe even the Eagles too, they believe in these quarterbacks that they don't want to get beat deep. And we saw how people tried to solve Patrick Mahomes last year by playing like two deep safeties. I got to think with the, like those types of threatening offenses, they're happy to get paper cut to death versus just getting, you know, that sort of Tyree kill oriented bomb. That's going to just destroy you in, in 10 seconds. That's a hundred percent. Right. And those trends we've seen throughout the season so yeah. far, teams are using two high safety looks a lot more often than they ever have. All right. Uh, design mind has Tom Brady and Geno Smith. Would you try to trade G- Geno to get a top wide receiver or running back or hold him as a strong backup? I would definitely yeah. be looking to trade Gino right now if I have Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah. Look for uh, a team that doesn't have a Honestly, I might consider trading Brady in that because you might be able to get more. No <laughs> way. You can't. Like, you cannot. No, I like Brady rest of the season. Gino, like, can you? I have I, a lot of faith. I mean, five weeks is a pretty decent sample size here. And he's got the is. talent at receiver. Uh, Tolan, you're welcome for the motivation. Consider me. Oh, wow. uh, Adam's biceps. Can you show off a bicep real quick? Yeah, please. Well, I mean, they're very small. That's why. Let's I'm see open. one. Let's see one flex. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not Pull gonna the shirt see. up. Roll it up a little bit. And give uh, us a little flex. No, no. One time, Adam. One time. What receivers would you drop? What if we Elijah? said it was for St. Jude's? <laughs> Which receivers <laughs> would you drop Elijah Moore for? Oh. Um, I, I mean, mean who, okay. what? Jacoby Myers? Alec Pierce? Alec I could Pierce. Drop him. Yeah, I could do Myers and Pierce, honestly. That's Rondale crazy. Moore. More. That's a good. Well, the more yeah. one, I, I'm a little bit on Adam's side with. I'm just a little worried once Hopkins is back, what his role will be. But mm-hmm. it could be. Well, I mean, it's still going to probably be that similar type of role within that system. So I kind of like that too. Oh, this is for Dan. Dan, I have a massive question. This is from Aria, by the way. Love that Aria. Star- it's actually Aria Stark in a Bill Bell on Aria Stark's head on Bill <laughs> Belichick. It? She's a fate, and she can do that. So I'm actually surprised she's not Bill Belichick on Aria's. But I don't know. Let's move on. I'm one in four. <laughs> Would you trade Alvin Kamara and Gabe Davis for Brees Hall and T Higgins? Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Higgins with the ankles scaring the hell All out right. of me. Uh, no, no, no. I want to see what's going on with Higgins ankle first. Could be a multi-week absence. How about you, Sia? I would do it. Uh, because yeah. Gabe Davis has his has ankle problems of his own that might True. get aggravated. So I just think the uh, upside of, of both T and Brees is, is just enough to, to pull the trigger. I have Taysom Hill. Is Dalton Schultz droppable at this point, or should I hold until Dak returns? Hold, I would say. Yeah, I would too. That's a shame Dak won't be back for this week's game. Pitts is stuck on IR. I think they might be the Eagles. Lucky. Uh, do I need to drop someone to make a claim on ESPN? If so, should I drop ever? Oh, he does need to drop someone. I don't. I don't, I don't know if you do. I, I don't know. I don't work for ESPN. Should I drop <laughs> Everett and my kicker? What? Yeah, you can drop Everett. I have no idea what's going on in this Me one. Me neither. <laughs> yeah, you can. You don't need. You don't need Gerald Everett. You can drop Gerald Everett. It's no one's open. better at interpreting questions than Adam, as far as everyone has, I've seen on the show. He has pits and so much experience with it. It's true. Okay. Yeah, he has pits and Goddard. Exactly. I guess he has pits, Goddard, and Everett. Right. Really a lot know. of tight ends you got there. Uh, Kittle <laughs> and Jamal Williams for Higby and Ken Walker. Which side wins? I'll take the Higby Walker side for sure. Mm, me oh, yeah. too. Are you winning both parts of that trade? Is That's a great question. Yeah. 
I mean, you hope at some point the Rams will transition and evolve as an offense. They don't want to be running this offense through Tyler Higby. But the question is, can they? They let they didn't have any replacement for Andrew Whitworth at left tackle. They have injuries on whatever was left of that offensive line. And so, and they can't get their run game going. So they can't really run play action in the deep half. So I don't know if that offense will change. So I, it might, Higby might be the better option. I agree a hundred percent. They they also need a field stretcher. They need Van Jefferson back. Need Things might change a little bit across the receiving core. Like even for Allen Robinson and Ben Skoronek. Yep. It, well, not Ben Skoronek, but even for Al, Allen Robinson, when Van Jefferson comes back. But until then, it's going to be the Higby Cooper Cup show. If I you mean, look would, at all those offenses that Adam talked about that were bottom 12 in intended air yards, does a single one of them have a field stretching wide receiver? Uh, and that was, we should have, yes. I should have brought this up a yes. little earlier. Who? Yes. Mike Williams. Mike Williams is not a field stretching wide receiver. That's one of the chargers that. biggest issue. They can't Justin, create Justin Jefferson? Justin Jefferson for sure. Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith for the Eagles, for sure. But besides those two teams, the Chiefs don't have one. I mean, you could say that they have one in, in Marquez Valdez Scantling and the Bengals. I think I think you're wrong about this. The Bengals do. Okay. I take that back. It was a bad yeah. take. Let's it was a bad, on. it was a really it was a dreadful <laughs> take. Uh, a dreadful I, take. I, I would do this trade to get Higby and Ken Walker, but I would think I would take Hill <laughs> over Higby. Uh, I'm still I'm still there because I the think the second so, half of those teams, by the way, don't have field stretchers, but still yeah, a bad but, take. Still a bad take. Still, have bad take. still a bad take. Yeah, it was a really it was just a dreadful take. Uh, what's FFC? <laughs> Almost as bad as Iser kind kind of fell for life or whatever the hell his name is. Iser? Is that just like Mr. Isaiah? Al- what is it? Uh, Isaiah. All right. What's FFT's advice for streaming DSTs? Top three in case some are taken. Hmm. Well, I kind of like the Jaguars. No team, I mean, yes. I don't check their roster percentage, but no team has been sacked more than the Colts. Jaguars are the great Jaguars have, have a pretty good DST so far this year. And they are no team rostered. scores fewer. Oh, than sorry. They're 82% roster. Never mind. Don't people... drop them. I kind of like. Um, I'm going to take a look right now. I don't know if I like Washington or Chicago on Thursday night. That's uh, two nope. great matchups, but bad defenses. Give me, uh, I like the Chargers as a stream. Yep, I, I put in a claim for them. Yep. Like the Chargers as a stream. I like the Rams, but they probably yeah. can't get them. That's not a stream. It's a bad take again. Um, let's see what else we got here. Chargers, <laughs> Jaguars. Who else is a good stream? Uh, yeah, this wasn't a great week. Patriots might be available. I think Patriots they have might be available. I don't hate that as a stream. I don't love that as a stream. Um. I'm not really loving. I don't mind the Vikings as a stream if Skylar Thompson plays. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That's a good stream if they get Thompson. All right, good question. Thank you. If you have the Jaguars, hang on to them. I'd say. Uh, would you, how would you rank these guys rest of season in PPR? David Njoku, Taysom Hill, and Kyle Pitts. It's PPR. I, I would. I'd still go Njoku and then Pitts and then Taysom Hill. I'm going Pitts and Joku Hill. I I would put Hill last. There's still uh, some upside for Pitts once Desmond Ritter comes in there. That's mm-hmm. what you're waiting for if you're a Pitts, true. if you're a Pitts manager right now, and it's going to happen. They need to see what they have in him. Mm-hmm. Would you? Oh, uh, any buy low wide receiver twos? Um, sure, it must be right. Yeah. <laughs> and I I would say honestly I don't. What do you like? This is an interesting one to frame because I don't know what people perceive his value to be. But I am not selling Marquise Brown with the idea that he's just going to stink going forward. I agree. Um, I think you you know he is a wide receiver too. They they have thrown the most passes and run the most plays in the NFL, and I think Hopkins probably won't be what you expected him to be. And Marquise Brown, you know, I think they'll both be wide receiver twos basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agree. I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily buy Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy because I'm worried about Wilson's injury and that offensive line. Losing your left tackle is never great. Yeah, you're too, you're way you're way too concerned about that stuff. That's like we'll see. You're just way too concerned about. We'll that see. Stuff. We'll see. I mean, look, it's a bit, it's a deal. It's a big deal. But what's going on with the Rams right now? How come they can't move the football? They got one playmaker. I, you earlier today, by the way, you talk about bad takes. You did kind of inadvert what? inadvertently what say bad takes. Hold on, no, I, mean, I haven't gotten to it yet. Like, trust me. You did sort of inadvertently say that the Rams ran their offense through Tyler Higby, which was was pretty. Right funny. now, they're they're running their offense through Cup and Higby. But you didn't say Cup and Higby. You well, said obviously Higby. Cup is assumed. I mean, he <laughs> gets fifteen targets a game. Adam, <laughs> you believe it? You believe this guy? Would you drop <laughs> Daryl Henderson for Eno Benjamin? 
Yes. Think we are. For me, for sure. We're not exactly sure how that backfield is going to be health wise, even this Sunday. I don't hate it, but I mean, Henderson could be, this offense could get better and Henderson could be the number one running back in two weeks for all we know. I don't know. It's a tough one. If you need a starter, if you need a starter this Sunday, then pick up Eno Benjamin. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. But he, but he, the problem is, even if you need a starter this Sunday, there's a good chance Eno Benjamin is is not that guy because Connor is, is, you know, Cliff Kingsbury was optimistic about him. So long term, I'd rather have Henderson. It, it just the way I think of it is, if the starter starting running back gets hurt, who has the bigger and better role? And for me, it'd be Henderson. Now this particular week, three running backs got hurt for the for the Cardinals, so it's a little bit different, but. Going forward, I do feel like it would be a split between Benjamin and Williams, and, and I'm not sure Daryl Williams wouldn't be the better guy in that scenario. Um, I, I also yeah. think we might be in the middle of like a hot hand thing that we're just not noticing. In other words, if Cam Akers has a couple more duds, I think you might just yeah. see Henderson start a game, and if he happens to be hot and all of a sudden it's, oh, Henderson's the starter, Cam Akers is the backup. Yeah. But if you look at all the like advanced metrics and even just like traditional rushing numbers, he's already been a dud acres for pretty much every snap he's had. So I don't know when the decision is going to be made if it hasn't been made already. But I also don't know if that offense is ever going to really produce a running back for fantasy purposes. Never roster a second QB. And that's Tech Mobile that we're looking at Ooh, there. Waste probably. of a roster spot. I don't agree with this at all, especially. I don't, this. I don't agree. Yeah. OK, good, good. All right, let's get some fresh questions in here. Welcome to the show. If you're just joining us, please hit that like button. In fact, don't hit the like button. Smash the like button. That is the cool thing to do. Smash the like button. Let's see how much we got. Uh, 435 people watching and 74 likes. That is not good enough. Come on. Uh, we got to get to triple digits right now before we unacceptable. answer Unacceptable. Yeah. yeah we'll pull I, the chat down and hit the like button. It Maybe takes you one enough. second. If for nothing uh, else, it'll make me look good because it'll be like, oh, they, yeah. they brought this new guy on, and sure. all of a sudden we got a lot of likes. I feel sure. like uh, Dobbs or Lazard, rest of season. Dobbs Lazard. for me. Oh, uh, that's Lazard for me. It's it's close. I mean, PPR you can make the argument for Dobbs, but I think Lazard's going to emerge as as the number one guy there. Schaefer, can we get? Uh, I say Lazard by the way. Can we get? Uh, especially now that I know that Rogers missed him on a touchdown. Thank you, Dan, for that. No, uh, he missed Dobbs. He, he missed Dobbs and Lazard. But you so, said yeah. Lazard first, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, one was a long bomb that would have been tougher to. The other was an easy touchdown. Yeah, Shaver, can we get a, a square around in the back haircut uh, poll? <laughs> it seems like diagonal diagonal uh, cut for the top oh, uh, sandwich has won, so we can put that one to bed. Um, I have Gordon, James Robinson, and Dylan. I don't need any of them. What wide receiver could I pull off for a mix, uh, or all of them? Hmm. Oh, I, I think I, Gordon's, yeah, go most, valuable to me, I Gordon's most valuable to me. I think I would look to trade James Robinson of this group. Personally, we're see, starting to see some increase in snaps every week for Travis Etienne. He's doing a lot with those snaps as far as creating on his own. So that's probably not the sign you want. And how many games the Jaguars going to be leading where the game script looks great for Robinson? I don't know at this point. So, yeah, I'd look to trade Robinson. He's th I think he still has a good amount of value as far as like who you could pull off. You might be looking for like a Jerry Judy type or Rashad Bateman. Uh, maybe Juju if you want to buy back in there, but maybe one of the first two I said. Yeah, and I also think you're kind of selling it at, at the wrong time for the record. Like, it, sure. it, it's very easy for me to say, like, you know, a week after these guys kind of threw up duds. But I, I do think there's a scenario where A.J. Dillon has a nice game this week and even perhaps James Robinson or Melvin Gordon. So if you can, if you have the ability yeah. to, I might wait for one of those three guys to spike, which I, I'm pretty sure at least one of them will have a pretty good game this week, and then they'll, you'll be a lot more marketable in that department. Good point. Yeah. Um, by the way, James Robinson has, of all running backs with 20 or more carries, he has the highest percentage of carries for zero or negative yards. Not great, Bob. Also, <laughs> he also has the fourth most – carries of 20 plus yards in the nfl so he's Adam, just do you, do you know the not great bob reference all right so scott white has been saying that for <laughs> years and i okay. ask him all the time and i always forget always forget so oh what is my God. Not great bob? you haven't seen any good tv show in the history of tv what is that is that home improvement from, or something home improvement yeah i'm gonna be referencing home improvement here adam <laughs> it's from mad men 
a show that you really wow. need to watch at some point. And right. it's a great scene where this guy, this kind of stuck up actor or stuck up character on the show, he's having a bad day. And then he gets into the elevator with one of the most like perky up, like nice guys is always like trying to like be like a schmoozer. And he's like, Hey, how's it going, Pete? And he's coming, Pete's coming into the elevator off like a horrible, horrible news that he received. He's like, not great, Bob. It's just, I don't know. It's not as funny as I reenact it. But no, I, it's funny because everybody says it all the time. So I, I get it. Um, we have a question here about Tredavious White. Any word on Tredavious White? I'm looking at this right now. Uh, he's on the pup list. He's been missed the whole year. He tore his ACL late last year. And there really is no word on him. I, I would have thought he would have been back for week five, but clearly he wasn't because the, the he was on, you know, pup for, for the four weeks. Right. And I don't, yeah, I don't know what the word is on today. I know earlier in the season, McDermott said like literally after the first game, that Rams game in one of the post game pressers or whatever was that in between that week, like we're going to get white back at some point, or he framed it in a way that was kind of like, we're going to slow play this thing. He said, mm -hmm. he said this week, he said, we continue to okay. take it one day at a time when he's ready to roll. He'll be out there. So very vague on Tredavious. We we'll need to rush this thing. Yeah. And, uh, he is, he was before the injury, one of the best corners in football. Yeah. He's a beast. All right. How are we ranking these guys rest of season? Tyler Tigby. I like Tigby. That's cool. A lot of tight end questions this week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tigby Everett Hawkinson. I'll go. This is PPR, by the way, full. So I'll go Higby. I'll go Everett, then Hawkinson for me. I'll go Higby, Hawkinson, and yeah. then Everett. I, I just worry about Everett's. Like, okay, so Donald Parham and is going to be back, which back. isn't a big deal. But yeah, Keenan Allen's the bigger deal. I, I just wonder yeah. how many targets he's going to get True. week to week. I changed my opinion to Hawkinson. Yeah. Oh, here's another one from Aria Belichick. Is Ramondre Stevenson a sell? Well, you should ask you, Bill. Uh, is Ramondre <laughs> Stevenson a sell high? Not Damon Harris me. Be out several weeks. So yeah, not for me. It, it, it always depends on well, what are you selling high for. Like, what does that mean True. to you? Because I don't think his stock is going to be any higher than it is now. I mean, he rushed for 161 yards. He got all the carries. He got a touchdown. Damian Harris is injured. Like if we hear news a week from now that Damian Harris is actually back sooner than expected, well, then all of a sudden, like how, what is his trade value? It's still good, but it's not great. So if you could, I mean, I think Stevenson is going to be an absolute beast. He is really, really good. And for the record last week, he had over a hundred yards after contact. So, yeah. I mean, he, he was just an absolute beast. I, if you can get like a lion's share for him, that's great. But I mean, it's one of those guys that like could also get you three or four wins over the next month. And if there's one thing you've been able to count on over the last decade in football, it's the Patriots offensive line run blocking really well. And they continue to do it. It doesn't matter. They trade Shaq Mason this offseason. Doesn't matter. They're still great at run blocking. So that's a good news. That's good news for anyone who's getting that much volume in that backfield. Should I trade Hollywood Brown and James Robinson for Brees Hall? Ooh. Do you have the depth for it at wide receiver? Um, and is Brees Hall the best player in this deal is probably the other thing I would ask myself. It's, for me, it's either Hollywood or Hall. Um, it's a high upside move. I think I wouldn't, though. Uh, I, I'm like leaning wood, yeah. but it's it's so close. Yeah. Really I, I do love the upside of, of Brees Hall. Um, but Hollywood in a PPR, he's getting so many targets. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, the expectation it, is, though, like, look, the only good part about it is if you sell Hollywood now and Robinson now and ETN, those trend, the trend with ETN getting more snaps and targets and everything like that continues, and Hopkins takes away from Hollywood, which we do these guns, bro. Home run, Harrison Bates. Oh, there they are. There's the biceps. There we go. Get to oh the my chin, God, everybody. Dude, put those away. <laughs> Holy crap. Poke an eye out. This is a family show. Uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, by the way, very surprising poll results. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. Oh, no. Buy low on James Conner. Adam, have Trump? you won a single poll yet? I feel like you're 0 for 100, <laughs> over 1,000 on these polls. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I must have won something. You're uh, such a contrarian. I don't try to be. I swear, I'm not a contrarian on purpose. I'm just weird. It's just as a big <laughs> like, I'm not buying low on James Conner. I, I think no. Najee Harris and James Conner are two players that I just nope. am out on. Same. Much, you know, it's Connor. I could be maybe pulled in the direction just because the offense is so much better. Yes. But uh, I just, I think they're going to be bad picks. If you, if you can give up a bench player for Connor and you can stash Connor on your bench for a week or two and kind of yeah. see what happens, I yeah. like that. But I wouldn't right. be giving up a starter for Connor. Um, yeah. Let's see. Who can I get from Michael Thomas if I already have Olave, Evans, and Lamb? It's not the time to trade him, I don't think. 
Yeah. I mean, it might be, you know, I, what are you what's gonna the get? value right now? I really don't know. And I have no idea what he's going to be like when he gets back. He's the people who avoided him. I mean, you're looking good right now is you got to wonder about his health, but, um, maybe like I a Jeff Wilson rental. Yeah, I think that, I think he's a borderline two, three wide receiver. <laughs> That's an you unfortunate okay? spelling of Mike Thomas, though, because that the spelled that way, it's the receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals right. that came in for T. Higgins. Yeah. So you got to go Michael Thomas there. I hate to be a stickler, but Tyler, <laughs> you got to go Michael Thomas. There. You can't get much for the other guy. Should I start the Bills DST against the Chiefs or drop Hines or Madison for a one-week option? What are your thoughts on top DSTs and tough matchups rest of season? Like a Done a lot of in-season research about top DSTs against tough matchups, and I tend to avoid them if okay. I can. But I do don't you stash them. Yeah, okay. I do stash, do you stash them. them. And I think you can cut Hines out of those two. Yeah, I I kind of agree with that. I, I think Hines' best case scenario might have just passed him by. Yes, exactly. Um, I will say that like the Bills, like they that's a fifty-four point total. They're two and a half point favorites. I think there is a scenario where they they get a couple sacks and turnovers here and may, maybe score on defense. That's your best case scenario. But obviously, they could also be like negative three. For whatever it's worth, I like the Bills minus two and a half at KC next week. I like it quite a bit actually. Okay, I I think um. I'm, you know what? I won a couple of bets over the weekend, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and bet. <laughs> nice. They're player props, so it felt good as a fantasy guy. Um, Josh, Jacob, Josh yeah. Jacobs over 18 and a half receiving yards, and uh, Carson Wentz over one and a half passing touchdowns came came through for me. I'm going to bet Bills minus two and a half, uh, just you, because. You know, before you do that, Adam, don't don't make it. Let's talk off air because I'll take the Chiefs and we can avoid the juice. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, all right. Nice. Uh, let's see what uh, what do we got here? It, by, by the way, this is I'm blaming C if I lose, and losing to a sports book is much different than losing to Schneier. I don't want <laughs> yeah. to. Do that. He already lost so many times to me already this season. What are we? What are we like? Am I three and zero against you in our combined leagues? I would probably. By the way, I would probably <laughs> not. I would not drop Madison. You can convince me yeah. to drop Naeem Hines, I guess, because I don't know if people are going to pick him up because he's probably going to be out this week. But I would likely just ride with the, with the Bills DST. I cannot sit here and guarantee you that a waiver wire DST is going to be better than them. So just stick with them, I would say. Uh, Higby, Gibson, and Judy for Mostert and Michael Thomas. I, I would make that trade. I, I mean, I, I like the Mostert, Michael Thomas side of it. Um, I, I don't think Gibson's going to have much value at all rest of season. Uh, Judy, I, just the Russell Wilson thing really concerns me. And I think Mostert is like the starting running back for the Dolphins. It's a close one, actually, because Judy and Higby have value. I, it's a stalemate for me. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pass just because I don't trust Michael Thomas with this injury situation. It was the main reason I, I mean, yeah. come on. Those two guys are so injured. At least Mostert is healthy right now. Uh, yeah, he is. And I really like Higby as just like a plant and go tight end for you at this point with how bad tight end position is. Yeah. Can you name five tight ends you'd rather have? Kelsey <laughs> Andrews. I would rather have Pitts, but that's, you know, I swing for upside. That's how I play this. I'd uh, take Kittle, like I said, I'd take Kittle. I'd, I don't know I'd take Kittle. Waller, assuming he's healthy. Waller, mm-hmm. man, this is, I have, that one's going to linger, I think. I hope not. I mean, they have a bye, luckily. Yeah, but he was ruled um, out immediately, and he's had a history of those types of injuries. Would you give up Sutton and Goddard? He already has Mark Andrews. Sutton and Goddard for Gabe Davis and <sighs> PR. with oh, mark boy. andrews i would i would do it i think you're losing the trade but i think you're making your team better because is he definitely losing the trade though no no he's not definitely losing Because gabe davis and there's a non-zero chance gabe davis is the best player rest of the season of all those four. He three catches he but faced he faced a great matchup against a team that cannot defend the deep ball Okay. I think he has another good one this week. I mean, you saw how badly they defended the deep ball last night, whether it was giving up big plays or pass interference right. calls. But Gabe Davis, I mean, the target share is still really low. His A dot is insane. You're not going to find – if his A dot stays the same, it probably won't. You just don't find wide receivers who are good in fantasy with an A dot as high as Gabe Davis. Like They have good weeks, but they don't end up being good. So he's got to be a little bit more diverse. Um, I like the Sutton and Goddard side a little better. But I think since you have Andrews, you can lose the trade and make your team better because mm-hmm. you're sitting Goddard, you know? So, and I, I still like Pittman a lot, especially in PPR. All right. It's a good trade. Definitely for me. Better stat. Oh, wait. Then what? 
then then no, it's a bad. Wait, what is it? Yes, it's a good trade. Yeah. Yeah. Better stash, Beckham or Jamison Williams? Jamison Williams James. for me. Yeah, Jamison for me. He's been my premier stash of the season. We'll see if I can be right about that one. I was offered Travis Etienne and Keenan Allen for Jeff Wilson. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Man, I need to hear any more. <laughs> I would consider Etienne straight up for Wilson, to be completely honest. Uh, yeah, Keenan Allen could be a, uh, an absolute monster. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming he's back in, in a week or two. So, yeah, I'm not expecting him this week because I don't even think he made it to the practice field last week. I don't think he practiced last week, but let's keep our fingers crossed. That is a terrible draft pick right now, Keenan Allen. I mean, um, it's going to be based, but yeah. eight TPR fantasy points in six or seven weeks, it seems. Right. Uh, and no IR spot either. That's also a tough pill to swallow. Would you drop Bateman or Garrett Wilson for Jacoby Myers? I would no. not. No, no. Right? Okay, good. I, I, I needed to feel normal there. <laughs> Is Brian Robinson going to live up to the hype? What hype? Like, no, well, hey, what's the hype? Great story. I love the story. I'm so happy for it. And I don't know if you guys saw this, but I thought it was really cool that he came out to Many Men last game, like the song by 50 Cent. I don't know if you guys heard that, but it's pretty cool. I thought that's crazy. Well, I look crowd. like I know the song Many Men by 50 Cent. You should know the song Many Men. Yeah, I, think, I but, guarantee you do. Play that after this show. Yeah, You'll play it after recognize the show. It. And like, where have you been living, dude? Like under a rock? You don't know Many Men by 50 Cent. It's just like an unbelievable well, take. It, this might it, be it. one of the most Azer takes of the history of the world. I don't know if I can see it. There's curses on it. There's curses uh, in it. But it's like, it goes Many Men, Wish Death Upon Me. No, I, I do. I can tell you for sure. I do not know that song. <laughs> Better watch how you talk when you music. talk about me. Very little music. Coming, you don't know that? All right. It's a great song. Uh, I mean, like, what was I listening but to? But you know the reference of why why he would do a 50 Cent song? You get that, get right? Shot? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, had an uncomfortable topic. Now, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm dropping Brian Robinson in one league. Okay. Um, I don't want to. I mean, he can still be the main running downs guy but and then what's like, that worth <laughs> right well i mean look you you liked everybody rostered rashad penny but that's a little different rashad penny was on an offense that's run first this is one of the most pass heavy offenses in the nfl but they but they run so many more plays that i bet you antonio gibson true. was averaging about as many carries as rashad penny that might be true i mean not <laughs> not really though i mean gibson Gibson, like they were giving Curtis Samuel some carries back there. Like they just weren't, they're just not using Antonio Gibson. Penny, like you you could kind of count on him as a workhorse unless he somehow dropped the ball and Ken Walker was just going to take over. Well, I, I I would say that in the first four weeks of the season, before Penny got hurt, before Brian Robinson came back, I would say Gibson probably had more carries than Rashad Penny. Penny had 49. I think Gibson was right around there. He was, they were almost even in carries. So that's that's but that's to, like Brian Robinson is not going to live up to the hype, but that's the cautionary tale on Rashad Penny because he averaged uh, on uh, on Ken Walker. Rashad Penny averaged twelve carries per game in the first four games of the season. I think there'll be more than that for for Walker, uh, but probably not that much more. Um, all right, let's see. Um, let's see. Would you drop Brian Robinson for Jamison Williams? And there's Jay Sherman once again. I would. Did you watch The Critic yet, Dan? No. Can you tell me where I can watch it? YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type it okay. in. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to get... I owe you that or Matchstick Men by the time I talk to you next. I owe you Dude, that. Match, Matchstick Men is so good. It's just so good. Like, you got to watch it. You started it and you liked it, right? I did like it. I did really enjoy it. Great movie. Uh, all right. I got Sa trying to get Saquon from a 1-4 manager. I'm giving up Kamara. Who else should I add to the trade? Lazar, Dobbs, Kareem Hunt, or Rashad White? Well, Hunt would be way too much. Um, if you can get away with adding one of the two Green Bay receivers, I think I think that's doable. Yeah, I might be I, I might be okay adding any of these four players to be honest, including Hunt. What did but you I, think about Kamara last week? Because he was incredible. I know. I loved what it, how he looked. My issue with Kamara is that. Taysom Hill is a huge part of their red zone package. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with the Giants. Brett Barkley is basically their red zone package. Yeah, you can right use well. Wildcat. <laughs> no, that was because he was injured. But yeah, Barkley, they use Wildcat in the red zone. Yeah. They don't even have yeah. to, like Barkley is their red zone offense versus Kamara. I'm still worried about him. Where the where's the touchdown upside if Taysom Hill is going to be in those packages? So that's the difference for me. I think Barkley is Barkley is one of the few players in fantasy who I'm willing to make these two for one or three for one trades for. No matter really who, the, I'm willing to give up a talent like Kareem Hunt, who's a weekly starter if you need him, 
because there's not many difference makers in fantasy this year outside of the quarterback, outside of those three quarterbacks. Barkley's certainly one of them. The first one I would offer is Rashad White. I understand his yeah. ridiculous upside if Fournette gets hurt, but he's just a bench player if Fournette doesn't get hurt. So sure. I would under, I think I would not do Kamara and Kareem Hunt for Barkley. I kind of agree with you, Sia. But I and I don't think I do Lazard either. Yeah, I, I agree. I would do Dobbs. I would do Dobbs first, and then maybe Rashad White second. Okay. All right. Who we flex in this week? Ceh against the against the Bills. Dobbins against the Giants. Walker against the Cardinals. Robinson against the Bears. Gosh, I don't know every matchup here. God, who are the Bucks playing this week? Uh, they have the Steelers. Steelers. Okay, Godwin against the Steelers. Kirk against the Texans, and Allen probably out. Oh, uh, Kirk is against the Colts. Oh, why did I think it was the Texans? So the it's Texans the Colts. last week. Oh, yes. And not expecting Keenan Allen. So standard scoring makes it a little bit trickier. I, yeah, I'm, I'm still go on Godwin. Walker. Yeah, I think it's between Godwin and uh, Walker. Ken Walker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Godwin. I'd go. Walker. I'd go Walker. I mean, Godwin, Godwin played 50% of the snaps last week, so yeah. it's a bit of a cop-out to play the is he healthy thing, but that's what I'm going to do just because I can't figure out another way to break that tie. <laughs> Steelers' defense is a disaster right now, though, that pass defense. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. All right, I just want to check in on the Twitter poll, or the YouTube poll. Yeah, uh, squared or round neckline, what's better? Round has got 61% wow. of the Wow. I know. No wonder they still ask you. That's probably why. They probably laugh at me for saying square. See, yeah, can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah. All right. Are you have, have you eaten Oreos in your life? Or you, Oreos are pretty good, right? <laughs> Oreos are delicious. Now, let me I, ask you I a just question. had one recently. They're amazing. <laughs> now, let me ask you yes. a question, Sia. When yes. you're eating an Oreo, what is the part you like more, the cookie or the cream? The cream, obviously. <laughs> obviously. What Come kind on. of animal says the cookie? Adam. Adam is that animal. Adam is that animal. And I kicked him out. <laughs> 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 and i can see him he doesn't even know he's kicked out he's backstage uh you can come back on bro you can come back on the worst yeah, part was 44 percent of youtube said cookie 44 wow. percent. and then we're at a tailgate me and adam for the giants game and four people come up they're like we're really big fans of you guys listeners of the show thank you for everything you do but i just want to say adam is 100 percent right the cookie is better than the cream yeah, I'm like, what true. world am i living in here this country's in trouble. It's, it's it really is. Part. All right, let's. Uh, this is uh, from Joshua. Okay, I need a receiver, and I have Jacobs, Mixon, and Gordon, and Dobbins. I'm willing to part with Dobbins. Who could I trade Dobbins for? Talk about low value right now. Yeah. Um, man, I would probably go Jerry Judy, someone like that. I like the idea of trying to go Mixon for Chase or something like that. I'm trying to Michael leverage Thomas Mixon instead. But if you're going Dobbins. No, not Thomas. Judy Bateman. Uh, let's see who else has upside in that kind of tier. Mm. I'm going to tell you right now, Dan, you're too low on Joe Mixon. You got to you got to get off of this. Well, he's not running the ball well, and he's, he's had not, light boxes more but than he's running. Like but that is a good thing. I mean, the fact right. that he's because he couldn't possibly continue to run as poorly as he did the first four weeks. And if he is getting all these light boxes, which you did a great job explaining yesterday, it's when you're blocking more than they have in the box. Very advantageous for a running back. Regression will come, and there is better production ahead. And he had a very good game. He averaged, what, six-ish yards per carry, and he came up a half a yard short of a touchdown. And he's getting you at least three catches every week. So okay. I just I just think Mixon's You know what? I take back what I said. I think you're right about this, Adam, and I'm wrong. First time I've maybe ever said those words on this show, even though it's been the case, it's hard to admit as a, as a human being that Adam Azer is right and I'm wrong. But one thing I will say about Mixon, he leads the NFL by far and touches inside the five yard line. He has 15. Wow. So there is value to that too. So I, I'm just maybe too low on him. I just don't like him as a talent anymore. I don't know what it is. He's not that good of a running back. It's, it's pretty damn clear. Yeah. But he couldn't have a better role. Um, sure. you know. uh, all right. Grade the trade here. Jamar Chase and J.K. Dobbins okay. or Jonathan Taylor and A.J. Dillon. In non PPR. Oh, that's I a like a. that. That's a that's a A minus. Yeah, especially because we really th I really think this Taylor injury was they were just taking it cautiously because they're playing on Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, and Dillon, Dillon still has value. 
I don't want to sure. not I don't want to jinx this because he's my boy and he played at Wisconsin and he's one of my favorite players in the NFL. But Jonathan Taylor does not have an extensive injury history at all. He did not miss games or practices at Wisconsin. Didn't miss practice in the NFL. In the NFL like either. Yeah, right. Crazy. Are you liking the great Wentz in Washington? Let's ask our resident Washington fan. Sia oh, you're a Washington fan, Sia? I did not know that. That's oh, uh, my San- God. Santana Moss holding up the 21 for Sean Taylor. For, for oh, that's the record. cool. Um, very cool. Thank you. Uh, no, of course not. So, <laughs> but, but it's not like, I, you know, of I kind of feel not. bad. I kind of feel bad for him uh, to an extent because to, to the extent anybody r- really had expectations for Carson Wentz, they right. just weren't watching him post injury with the Philadelphia Eagles or post injury with the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah. Like he's just not the same quarterback, completely different guy. And unfortunately these knee, knee, knee injuries affect guys like Carson Wentz more than some other people like Joe Burrow, because what Wentz relied on when he was so good with the Eagles was shifting the pocket, buying a couple extra seconds, if not an extra second and, you know, making the pass downfield. He can't do that anymore. And now he's on a team with kind of a broken offensive line yeah. and, a, you know, a, a pretty bad defense so really bad defense. Yeah. And you know, it p- to his ba- favor in fantasy though. It does. It, it, it should, but it's not right now because honestly, I think he's kind of shot. I, I hate to say but he's it. Had three good games from a fantasy perspective. Yeah, this is a strictly fantasy argument. I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep, I'm going to start him this week over Matthew Stafford again. I'm uh, oh, I, that's pretty fair. sure about that. Cause uh, you know, I have to look more into it, but um. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to start him over Stafford again, you know, and he's come through when he's had, when he faces teams that don't have a good pass rush, he's come through. He's faced the Eagles and the Cowboys and they've had great pass rushes and they've destroyed him. So that's kind of where I am with Wentz. Uh, they don't, they can't really run the ball that well though. So I don't know, but, but the yeah, good news is good. as long as you have Scott Turner, you're going to be throwing a lot of passes. So that's the good mm-hmm. news for fantasy right. owners for Wentz. Is Damian mm-hmm. Harris droppable? No, nah, I wouldn't. Nope. No. If the cream were the best part, they'd put it in the DQ blizzard. I agree with that. <laughs> uh, there's already that's the terrible take. There's already ice cream and plenty of cream based stuff in that. Yeah, DQ yeah, it's, it's, it's a bad take. Terrible take. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Schneider went in there and put that in the chat or something. No, I'm, yeah, me, a strong I'm comment. Did that. Would you trade Godwin for ETN and Ken Walker? Yes. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and and especially if you need RB help. I love that deal if you need RB help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ETN in full PPR, you know, it's not like he's been great or anything, but he's given you eight or more points in four or five weeks. Eight points is not anything to write home about, but but it's, it's trending or it's trending up trending as up. well. Yep. Yeah, the only thing is, I mean, he he basically they might just be a game script team. If they're gonna win, it's gonna be a Robinson week. If they're gonna trail, it'll but, be an ETN week. But they were pretty much in that game the whole game, uh they were, the whole yeah. time. And he still got it, you know, trended up from all the usage rates. So mm-hmm. he is averaging the th- Second or third most yards per catch among yeah. running backs with 10 or more catches. He only has 11. Um, I traded Debo and Ramondre for Derrick Henry and Deontay Johnson. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Man, the way they use this, the way they use Harris and Ramondre, and now just Ramondre, right. he could be a top five running back for a small stretch here. I he really could, wouldn't shock me. Be like a light version of Derrick Henry, right? Yeah. He's got yeah. that similar type of talent, similar type of offense. It's run first, not much of a role in the receiving. He might even have a bigger role in the receiving game. So it then comes down to like, are you losing? You're losing probably only not as much as you expect on Henry versus Ramondre. How much are you losing Debo versus Deontay? Probably a lot there. Like a that's. Lot. That's the problem. I just yeah. don't think you can count on. I mean, Debo, it's not like he's a target machine any, anymore with right. GG back there. But Deontay, I just don't think has like great value. I, I would, you know, it, it's not it's not a comfortable start for me, whereas Debo would be a comfortable start for me. So Deontay it's, it's had tough. a good target share last week in the first start for Pickett, but it didn't really translate. And I feel like we're going to have a lot of that. There's going to be a lot of stats that are like, well, this guy still gets a lot of targets, but it's that Steelers offense and they don't move the ball and there's no points. And it's like, do we even, mm-hmm. can we trust the volume? Would you drop Daryl Henderson for top waiver wire priorities? Yes, for me. Well, who yeah. specifically? Because Ken Walker, easy. So I would for I would take the shot. I know we had this discussion already. I would take the shot on you know Benjamin type because I, I don't really see the value. I loved Henderson preseason, but the way that McVeigh favors Acres, even despite Acres not producing, there's just no rhyme or reason for it. It's almost like when Sean McVeigh punts from fourth and one inside the 39 of the opponent. There's no rhyme or reason, but he's going to keep doing it. So <laughs> I mean. 
Uh, yeah, I, I would not drop Henderson for, you know, Benjamin. I, we talked about this earlier. CNR, yeah. are kind of like, if you need someone definitely for this week, then okay, maybe, but you may not even get a start out of, you know, Benjamin. Um, Try to shop Henderson to the to the Cam Akers uh, owner, and maybe they want to secure oh, that like backfield. That. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's one way to get rid of them. It's You're not going to get a lot back, but you'll get something. Would great you drop call. him for Jacoby Myers? I would. I wouldn't. Yeah, I understand. It's, clo- it's close, though. I mean, Jacoby, he's kind of the guy, right? Right. Uh, that, that one's really close. Yeah. All right, I'm going to read one more, and then we're going to skedaddle. Uh, this I didn't know. The Great Went was a fish festival. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. I don't like fish. So let's get a question here. Uh, you are Adam, you are awesome. Thank you. Okay, we can leave with that. <laughs> uh, how about grade the trade? I give up Oreos for Chips Ahoy. That's a that's a D. Oh, terrible trade. F. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, Chips Ahoy are great. Hold on. Hold Chips on. Ahoy Chips. chewy are okay. Chips no. away hard are terrible. That's a childish take. When you grow up, you realize the harder <laughs> the food, the better. Yeah, but, I know. Yeah, Adam's maybe right if we're here. talking about like Tate's, we're talking about crappy Chips Ahoy. <laughs> Chips Ahoy, they, 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 they are on its face. Chips Ahoy is not a great cookie, but once you, you actually like consume one, you're like, wait a minute, like I oh. like looks can be deceiving. It's kind of oh, one great. of those like I'll take a Costco cookie over a Chips Ahoy. <laughs> <laughs> Would you drop Aaron? This is our last one. Would you drop Aaron Rodgers for Geno Smith? <laughs> no. No, but it's, it's not argu- that Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> that's the thing. It's it's arguable week to week. Yeah, uh, like match. It's it's to me, it's kind of matchup dependent. If you could right. pick up Geno yeah. and have Rodgers, I would I would do that and drop some like you know f- fourth rate wide receiver or running yeah. back. He's really difficult, isn't he? See ya. I mean, he just. <laughs> yes, he's very difficult. Adam, you might have been the difficult one here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm uh, just saying, I do so, like these polls though. I didn't know I was walking into this. I gotta say, oh, yes. fun. Yeah. I have so many things that I want to like throw, like like potato chip uh, brands. Ooh, that, I'd like, love I to talk are, potato chips with you. I'm just saying, yeah. like there's, there's so uh, much. Out there. Adam, Adam's a classic Lay's fan. Oh, get out of here! I don't You're really. Not. He doesn't know. He doesn't know anything about me. He doesn't know. <laughs> about me. He's not even listening. Uh, we had a good one the other day. What was your? What's your favorite childhood sports movie? That was a good one. I think I voted for Mighty Ducks, right? Is that what I voted for? I voted Ducks. You voted Kaylot, Mighty Ducks. Little it was little. What was it? Little Giants was in there. Um, what was the fifth? The fourth one was another really good one. Uh, little Giants, Mighty Ducks, uh, Sandlot, Sandlot. Sandlot one yeah. more. There was one more though. There was a good one. You had a good one in there. That was yeah, tough it, was, to, it was a very I tough one. But then, then, then Dan, I think it was the Big Green. Uh, no, Dan, no. no, just kidding. Dan, <laughs> like that movie. Dan said something crazy that D two was better than D one. I it said was, it might be. I did not and, say and it. You were wrong. The the case easy. could be made. Was, no, a case can't be. It can't be made. It can't. You could. You didn't even remember the Iceland Greenland line. You know nothing about D two. <laughs> we're at. We're at it. Was it Space Jam? Space no, Jam. Oh, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, it was a lot good. of good ones there. I'd go with Space Jam, but I do have a question just real quick. Do you – favorite football movie? Because I have a definitive answer oh, yeah. here. And I don't think it's going to be an answer shared by either of you. Two. Remember the Titans. Titans. Mine is Remember the Titans too, definitively. What? Yeah. The replacements. Thomas. Oh, that's, that's a, a great good one, one too. That's a great. That has one really too. good rewatchability. Yeah, yes. I, like, I love the replay. Yeah, that might be too for what's me. Your, what's yours? What's yours? Guys, any given Sunday. No, yeah, that's up there. No, it's a great movie. What do you Remember mean? Al Pacino is so irresponsible. If the concussion, <laughs> no. the, the way he put he put back out there, it was that's really how it used awful. to be. Ab. The time no, they filmed that awful. movie, it was overboard. It was overboard. You, you realize that team was uh, based in Miami, right? Yeah, the Sharks oh, were yeah, a Miami yeah. team. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fast All right, forward. guys, we got to get out of here. Thanks so much for tuning circle. in. Uh, see you. Great to have you. We'd love to have any time, any Tuesday night. You want to hop on? You're more than welcome. Uh, and well, you know, we are your week to week. I'm Adam <laughs> <Yeah>. Razor. <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later on Fantasy 